Today, my mom's famous chicken casserole, adapted for vegetarians, of course, on vegetarian cooking for carnivores. Welcome to Vegetarian Cooking for Carnivores, a meat lover's guide to fabulous vegetarian cooking. I'm Bonnie Antonini. My mother was famous for her chicken casserole. I've never met anybody who didn't absolutely love it. It was one of the things I most missed when I became a vegetarian. But I've recently discovered a wonderful moist imitation chicken, and today, in tribute to my mother, I'm going to show you how to make the vegetarian version of her chicken casserole. Don't bother writing down the recipe now. As usual, I'll have it printed at the end of the video where you can push pause and copy it then. For now, just watch and listen. This recipe calls for four hard-boiled eggs, so you'll have to do those ahead of time. It's a perfect recipe to make after Easter when we're all inundated with hard-boiled eggs. But if you don't have any on hand, then you will have to make some. Now, bear with me for a minute, experienced cooks out there. This is for the newbies. I'm going to quickly show you how to hard-boil eggs. Into a saucepan, put four eggs and completely cover them with water. Over a high heat, bring the water to a boil. Once the water is boiling, put the lid on it, slightly askew to allow the steam to escape. Then cook them for 10 minutes. Remove the pan from the heat, remove the lid, then let cool and refrigerate. Now, here's a tip for even you experienced cooks. How to tell the difference between a hard-boiled egg and a raw egg. Who amongst us hasn't hard-boiled eggs? Put them in a spot in the refrigerator sure that we'll remember which is which and then forgotten. Now you can, of course, mark the eggs, but if you didn't, go ahead and spin them. Can you see the difference? The hard-boiled egg spins faster and smoothly, whereas the raw egg spins in a wobbly manner and slower. And there you have it, a new tip to add to your collection. The next thing to do is to make a substitute for the Campbell's cream of chicken soup that's used in so many casserole recipes. You can make this ahead of time if you like, or at the time you're preparing the casserole. It's basically just a white sauce with some spices added. White sauces are always the same. Equal amounts of butter and flour, and then a liquid, usually milk, is added, the amount of which is dependent on how thick you want the sauce to be. Since I'm trying to imitate the Campbell's cream of chicken soup, I want my sauce to be very thick. So into a saucepan, I'm going to put three tablespoons of butter over a low flame. Then add three tablespoons of flour and immediately begin incorporating all the flour into the butter until the mixture is a smooth paste. A flat-headed stirrer is the best utensil for this process. You want to mash out all the flour lumps so that the white sauce isn't lumpy. If you don't do that at this stage, once you've added the liquid, you'll never get rid of the lumps. Once all the flour is blended in and you've got a nice smooth paste, continue to cook for about a minute over that low flame. Then add 3 quarters cup milk, turning up the flame to a medium level, and stir frequently, preferably continuously. The sauce will thicken within a couple of minutes. Stir in half teaspoon salt, a quarter teaspoon each of dill, thyme, and celery salt. Remove the pan from the heat and let the sauce cool while we prepare the rest of the ingredients. We'll need six cups of chopped imitation chicken for this recipe. The imitation chicken that I like to use is by Worthington. It comes frozen and weighs four pounds. Be sure you read the label carefully because Worthington has other imitation meat products and they're all packaged similarly. Now, a word of caution about these products is that they are a bit pricey. This one costs about $26. But you have to remember that unlike real chicken, you're not paying for bones, fat, and skin. Every bit is edible. And they go a long way. One of these logs will make about 18 cups of chopped chicken, which is much too much for any one recipe. In fact, what I like to do when I bring them home is allow them to thaw just enough so that I can cut them into thirds, which is about the right meal size portion for my family. Then I refreeze the portions I'm not going to use and place them in my coffin size freezer and allow the portion that I am going to use to completely thaw. For this recipe, slice the chicken into 3 8 inch thick rounds. Then slice the rounds into 3 8 inch sticks Turn the sliced round 90 degrees and slice again. Put the chopped chicken into a large mixing bowl. Add two cups of diced celery, one two-ounce jar of diced pimentos, 
the four hard-boiled eggs chopped up, three quarters cup mayonnaise, one teaspoon salt and one teaspoon dried minced onion from the spice section of the store, the white sauce, and two tablespoons of lemon juice. And you can use fresh or bottled. Now just mix all these ingredients together and pour into a nine and a half by 13 inch casserole dish. Top with one cup of shredded medium cheddar cheese and two thirds cup of toasted slivered almonds. If you want to be a little decadent, you can also top it with one and a half cups of crushed potato chips. Just layer it on before the cheese and the almonds. My mother always made the casserole this way, but I think that the casserole is so good without it, I'd rather save on the calories. Now just top it with aluminum foil. At this point, you can either refrigerate the casserole and cook it later. My mom always made this the day before. Or you can go ahead and cook it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 25 minutes covered, then remove the foil and cook it for an additional five minutes. Happily for my hungry family, this casserole is ready to serve right out of the oven. Even my pickiest eater loves this casserole. While the casserole was cooking, I prepared my side dishes. Tonight, we're having mom's chicken casserole, steamed broccoli, homemade dinner rolls, and of course, a yogurt shake. Don't forget the recipes at the end of this video. If you'd like to learn more about vegetarian cooking for carnivores or to watch previous episodes, go to my website at vegetariancookingforcarnivores.wordpress.com. And for you Facebookers out there, go to my Facebook page called Vegetarian Cooking for Carnivores, click on the like button and you'll automatically receive my new videos. Well that's all for today. I'm Bonnie Antonini and we'll see you next time on Vegetarian Cooking for Carnivores.